I'm Andrew Rains, um, and here's Mr. Green, and this is a, a little impromptu session. We were just interviewing another veteran, and we met him in the lobby, and we decided we'd get his story too. So he served in the Korean War, and it's nice to meet you. Uh, Tell you. us, where, where were you born? And, and I was born that. in Kings Mountain, with two words, North <laughs> Carolina. That was... Uh, there's a national park up there on, in the South Carolina side. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, October the 12th, 1930, Columbus and I discovered America. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, anyway, I uh, uh, lived there until uh, 1951. Well, it really in uh, 1947, I moved to Charlotte and uh, lived with my brother. And uh, I went to Harding High School there. And uh, then when I still kept in contact with my friends in King Mountain, and I had one friend that uh, he was about to get drafted but he wouldn't go with anybody else. He wanted me to go. And I said, okay, let's go to Charlotte and we'll sign up over there because they wouldn't take us in Shelby where we were supposed to go. We went over there, but they, they was full. They, they wouldn't take them volunteers. And so uh, we took off and went to Charlotte and uh, they accepted us and uh, we went uh, back over there and, and uh, caught a bus and went to Columbia and got with a, another group and took off to San Diego for a boot camp. And uh, we took us, uh, uh, took us, I forget now how many, about 10 days to get there, and we went to sleep, in, and we went into Kansas, and we woke up and still in Kansas. <laughs> but it was a long trip, and we finally got there, and uh, we uh, started boot camp, which was, uh, uh, at that time, was uh, three months. And uh, so we, we joined I joined June uh, 3rd, 1951, June, June and, and we were uh, discharged June the 3rd, 1955. And uh, that, uh, the reason is two days different. Uh, they let me out on Friday instead of keeping me to Sunday. <laughs> And so I drove uh, home from from there, and uh, they, uh, but I was I was on a we went to San Diego after uh, the while uh, I went aboard ship, and uh, the we put it like I said we put it in commission, and. Uh, then we went back to San Diego, and then we uh, got ready. And when we went back to San Diego, it was right after Thanksgiving, and we already knew that we were going overseas uh, the first week of January. And so uh, we uh, took off and uh, left uh, San Diego, and this. This is, I'm telling a few little things that's funny now, son. <laughs> Don't get me. But we had a, had a, uh, a cook who was a Filipino young fellow, similar to you. He's just uh, in the Navy and uh, he was so happy. He, he, we were going to the Philippines. We knew we were going there. <laughs> and. He got seasick, the 
as soon as we pulled out of the harbor and he didn't get out of the bed until we got to Pearl Harbor. And when we got to Pearl Harbor, they already had his orders and he was at the game plank and he was off that ship because he couldn't, he couldn't keep riding in that ship, or any ship really. So uh, I don't know that they discharged him, but uh, uh, they wouldn't uh, let him go back on the ship. Uh, but, uh, and then we started, uh, left Pearl Harbor, went to Wake, and left Wake, and we was halfway to, to uh, the Philippines, uh, about halfway, and we got a radio message that there was a sailor sick on a ship headed back to Wake, but they, they didn't have a doctor, and he had a, uh, a sinus infection, and it went backwards instead of coming out of his face, and they won't. And we had a doctor there, and I was a core uh, and the sick baby with him, uh, and uh, this doctor was <laughs> pediatrician <laughs> in the Navy <laughs> and uh, so we turned around and went back and met the ship and the best experience I saw was transferring this sailor from that ship over to us in the middle of the night and both of them jumping up and down like that and trying to get swing him over to our ship. But uh, we did it and uh, we took him on to uh, the Philippines and uh, on to Guam and uh, put him off there at the hospital in, in Guam. And then we went on to the Philippines and then uh, we went up to uh, Hong Kong, China. station ship there. We took all the radio uh, messages and so forth for the uh, uh, embassy in uh, Hong Kong. And, uh, so uh, we, uh, we had a pretty good softball team on that ship. We played at every place that we stopped. We, we played uh, softball. And uh, we loved it. We went over to Kowloon, across the bay, uh, to from Hong Kong to Kowloon, and uh, we went over there to play a team. We heard there was a big team over there, and we went over there to play them. And uh, we were down in a uh, I don't know, like a cliff there with a big old. Embassy building up there with the <laughs> Russian flag flying, <laughs> and uh, uh, we uh, we played down there, and uh, they were good ball players as long as it was a fly ball. They could chase one and catch it. But now, if it was a grounder, <laughs> they couldn't stop it. But, but we had a lot of fun with them and, uh, and really, really enjoyed playing with them. And uh, so then after I, uh, we went back to, to the Philippines and went down to uh, Long Pool, I got my orders to come to back to the States and go to Corman School in San Diego. And so I came home and uh, and I uh, spent uh, spent three weeks and went back and for six months right, went to school right, to be a corpsman and then uh, that's when uh, uh, I uh, went to uh, the went and formed our ship and we all got together to get on 
on the ship. I'm a little ahead of myself. But, uh, that's, that's, uh, they put us all together and uh, we yeah, had to uh, do a little extra work on it before we pulled out and then we went on and, like I say, and uh, so then when I got my orders to go back to school, I flew every airline that the services have. I, I took off the, in a seaplane. I, I flew in a, a marine outfit to uh, Guam, and uh, then I flew uh, Air Force to uh, uh, Honolulu, and then I flew uh, the Navy in the Moffey Field in, <laughs> in California. So that's how I got back. And, and then I went uh, and uh, had, had uh, about two years to do. And, and like I say, uh, after I got out of school, I, I went to Oakland Naval Hospital in Oakland, California. And that's where I spent the rest of my time as a corpsman. And uh, then I uh, uh, got a, a good job in, in the security office uh, making IDs. <laughs> and and uh, uh, so uh, I spent the last, uh, I guess, 13 months in the, in the security office. And, and we, we had a good time. And the thing about Oakland Old Naval Hospital, as I understood it then, and I still understand it now. Maybe I'm not there. Theodore Roosevelt, uh, no, no, Franklin Roosevelt's wife flew over that area going into San Francisco and said that'd make a nice hospital down there. And it was like a mountain, I mean. Uh, and uh, they built that thing all over it. And uh, it was uh, an old wooden, everything was wooden frame and uh, everything. But, uh, that's, a, that's the type of walls. And had a lot of people on, there on the base. So uh, that's, uh, that's my story. Never had to sleep in a foxhole? No, no, no. Did four my years? Wife, in four years, and I. I uh, had a clean sheet and pillowcase and clean clothes. Because <laughs> we, we had a laundry <coughs> and uh, had a bunk and uh, sleep in and uh, somebody to cook your meals for you too, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. At home. Uh, Didn't have to eat at your um, helmet? No, no, no. Yeah, eat just like you do anywhere else. Uh, with a tray and uh, we sit down at a table and uh, oh, I forgot one thing. Only time I got seasick it was one night and we had uh, sauerkraut and winter <laughs> and I loved it and I ate that. And we were in the mess hall before we had our movies. We had movies and good right. movies. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, that, and, uh, this little ship was 310 feet long, and, and we had a 300 men on on the ship. What what was the make it model of your ship? Uh, what, what what was the name? It was a small a small seaplane tender. It was on a DE hull, but it had a big fan tail with a five bench going right there in the middle of the, the fan tail. And, uh, it uh, was, uh, like I said, it had uh, two decks and uh, it had uh, everything set up to, uh, uh, for a seaplane to pull up beside us and tie it up and so forth. Have a name, name, you have a name for your ship? Yes, USS Orca, O-R-C-A. Orca, like a whale. Yeah. Okay. And, 
that's what, what it was named after. AB 49. My service number was 4235. That's your dog tag numbers? Is that what you're talking about? Dog tag numbers? Yeah. You still remember those numbers? Yeah. It's like yesterday. It's like yesterday. That's right. But that's... It sounds like you have a good memory. So thank you for giving it to us. Well, I hope I... Done you some good, but it's really, uh, I don't know what these poor old newspapers are going to say when they read it. <laughs> Andrew's got. Because, son, I went in there and I went to have a good time and, and, and uh, live it to the fullest, and that's what I did. And uh, I just uh, had a great time, and I loved every minute of it. But I didn't want any more of it. <laughs> Four years was enough. Four years was enough. But you loved every minute of it. That's Except right. for that little time after that sour cream and wieners. <laughs> but I lost it. I ain't no joke about that. <laughs> I, I sure did. But, yeah, but I, had a, I had a good on the ship with a four rack uh, infirmary. And being this other cordman who slipped. <laughs> and and uh, in there, you know, when they, we didn't have anybody in the sick place. <laughs> and yeah. we had a nice mattress that day and everything. We, we had it made. So we, we could uh, come and go and, you know, and, uh, sleep late and everything else. We didn't have to run uh, out on the deck. You, you never had. Do you have any very seriously injured uh, patients in your in your in your uh, wards? Uh, no, not uh, not not other than that, that boy that was sick. Say sick. Couldn't stop. We going. we picked up. And, okay, yeah. And transferred. That was the only one. Oh, we had some. Uh, was uh, oh, come in. And, <laughs> Not in a gunfight with the Koreans, that was just uh, a little bit of stitches. <laughs> hey, do, you do, do you do six stitches and all yeah. that stuff? You, you yeah. sew them up too? Just like a nurse. I can do it now. I can do it in nurse here. Stitch up? When they try to take blood and they go, go, go. How about that, Frank Gray? Now, <laughs> now what what you what uh had you end up back in Florence? Uh, well I, when I was in Charlotte <clears throat> in high school, my brother was in the uh, with the Firestone Tire and Rubber Company and in the district office in Charlotte there, which, which was uh, right in Graham and uh, Tryon, and uh, uh, I worked there in the summer and after school, uh, and, uh, while I was going to school, and so uh, when I, uh, I stayed with them and, uh, for a couple of years, and I mean, when I came out of the service, I went back and I got a job back with them with the, uh, in the water department. Uh, and uh, that was the Firestone Warehouse out on Wilson Boulevard. If you ever went to the airport, you would have had to go by it because it was right there at the clock of the, the, the road to the airport. January 1st of 59, but I didn't uh, 
and the stay in Sparkville with, with five months or to June the first, and Dillmar Oil Company and the Tire Company and Ladder bought the old Carolina Rubber Company and there on Floyd Street. And Dillmar hired me from Firestone uh, to come down there and run the tire company at, uh, uh, right there at the Garney Bank and, and uh, across the street. Carolina rubber beside the, uh, the uh, church, the black church church on Court Street. And uh, that's how I got to Florence. And so I worked with them 10 years and then uh, I went and bought the smoke shop and I had it for seven years. And then uh, I uh, Sold it to uh, John and Spiro, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I went. Uh, uh, when I did that, I went to work for Rich Tex Brick out of Columbia, and I stayed with them 17 years and retired. And uh, then I just uh, two years before I retired, I went out to Kansas City and. Did, uh, went to school out there for shop and salt blades and, and, and so forth. And when I got out there, I feel, realized I couldn't get any production with just three, hour, three or four hours at night. I was still working. And so uh, the second day we got into sharpening clipper blades and scissors for dog groomers and veterinarians. And I said, I found what I come at. <laughs> and I bought my equipment and came home and until I came out here in uh, 15, January 31st of 15, I, uh, I spent 27 years doing that in my backyard. <laughs> So I'm a jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. Yeah. How'd you meet uh, your wife? On the way home from California. That's another story. My these friends, or these this couple had a son who was stationed. He was in the Navy, but he was stationed in uh, uh, Nevada. And he came down with the riders, which is kidneys, and uh, he uh, they transferred him from uh, Nevada to Oak Knoll because that was the closest hospital. And he came there, and they started working on him, but uh, they didn't do it. They couldn't do anything. And he was one. He was the first uh, person to use the uh, dialysis. The dialysis machine. That's right. He, he was the first one to ever use the dialysis. But he didn't make it. But his mother and dad were from Nebraska, Broken Bone, Nebraska. They and uh, they come out there and spend a couple of weeks with him and then they'd go back home. And they had a plumbing business. And uh, so uh, when after he died, they came back, he died in uh, November and they came back in March and they knew that I was coming, getting discharged in June. And they said, Frank says, it, if uh, when you get this job, why don't you come by and see us? And say, uh, I'll uh, said, uh, we'll uh, we'd like to see you. And it's just a short to come the northern route as it is the southern route. And so I said, okay. And Friday, uh, June the third, 
right after lunch, I jumped in my automobile and took off <laughs> to Florence. I mean, to Kings Mountain, but I didn't, didn't make it. Right. And I stopped in, in Broken Bow to see them. And my wife, Betty, was a school teacher, and they practically raised her and got her. Uh, and she worked for them in the summer and so forth, and uh, she got some scholarships and went to Carney State in, in uh, Nebraska and became a school teacher and came. And so when I called them and told them I was on my way, I was coming, and so forth. Uh, she had to finish school that Friday. And they, they, she was teaching school in Grand Island, which is about 80 miles from Broken Boat. And uh, they took, called and told her to come home. There was a sailor, there was a sailor coming. <laughs> <laughs> so they set you up. And so <coughs> they, they came and uh, uh, she came and I got there about 7.30 Sunday morning and I drove all the way. I'd stop at the rest area and sleep an hour or so and then I'd keep coming and I, I got there at 7.30 and, uh, and they told me how to come in. But I got out there and, uh, and as I entered Nebraska, they didn't have any arrows pulled which way that road went. You would have to just guess, <laughs> according to the sun, which way you want to go and make sure you're headed that way. And, and uh, I finally got there and I, I can put the best scene I have ever seen in my life was when I come through Colorado. That, that, uh, uh, Saturday afternoon at about five o'clock, and if I come around that curve in that mountain, there was that uh, sheep herder with his sheep out there herding, and that dog just to work it. And man, that was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Really, the, the, the way the land they were on, it, and the, the time of day, and so forth. It was a beautiful picture. I still still remember that, and so uh, that was. Uh, you got there. Y'all had Sunday lunch. You got there some Sunday morning. Y'all had Sunday lunch with Betty for the first time, or uh, was, uh, she was there yeah. waiting on you. No, but she she, she didn't know me. Either. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> and uh, another thing. I mean, my life history. But, I mean, how long did you stay there before she, uh, did she hop in the car and ride with you back to Kings Mountain? Or, uh? No, 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 listen. Okay. Uh, more to this story. There's more to this story. Yes, there are. I went uh, and uh, I stayed, uh, at, well, when I got this uh, Sunday, Monday morning, Catherine White, so uh, that's who it was. Uh, Joe and Catherine White, so was the, the couple, and they said, Frank, if you'll stay till this weekend, we'll take you up to Mount Rushmore, and uh, you can see the faces. I said, well, I might as well do it, because I don't know that I'll ever get back this way. And so I called home and told my parents that I was going to be late, and I was going back out there for and so we went and we stayed at Eisenhower's summer home was a resort and that's where we spent the weekend and we bet he was there too yeah she, yeah. she came to them right. on that uh, Sunday too uh, no she came to Saturday <laughs> oh she was there waiting on the other day yeah she was waiting on me but she didn't know me and I didn't know her but y'all spent a week together spent one week together and then in October I came home and uh, went to uh, work 
for Gulf Oil Company, and uh, she uh, and I went back out there in October, and she came to Kings Mountain Christmas. But in the meantime, the few days that I we saw each other, we would go down to this uh, all night uh, truck stop and there and broke a bull and, and drink coffee and talk. And so that was a few days when I first met her. Then I didn't spend but uh, about four days uh, uh, in uh, October. And then uh, she came and spent uh, a week Christmas with, with uh, my family and uh, at Christmas, and I gave her a ring, and she went back to and taught school for a year or until June, and uh, we, I went back out there in June and got married. You know, really, if you want to call it that, we didn't have five dates, as you want to call it. Right. Yeah, five days. Everything else was long distance. Okay. Yeah. But you and how long were y'all married? Fifty-seven yeah. years. Fifty-seven years. Yeah. Her first and my first. Yeah. And uh, December the thirteenth of uh, thirteen. Right. And that's my story, son. Thank you for it. <laughs> All right, Mr. Frank Green, you're a good man.